Hey guys, it's Travis with BPNorthwest.com. Today, we're going to do a front-end suspension upgrade on your British car. Now, I'm going to be doing it on a Mark IV Spitfire, but if you have a different model of Spitfire, or even different make and model of car, a lot of the things that you're going to see today, you're going to be seeing on your car. So if you have a, a Triumph Roadster, TR4, TR6, MG Midget, uh, a lot of the things that you're going to see today, you're going to be seeing on your car. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, for this particular upgrade, I decided to go with a pair of uh, gas shocks. These are an adjustable shock. They're really nice. Going to give you a super good ride. Uh, the other thing I decided to do was to go ahead and replace these springs uh, on the front of the car. And the reason being, these are high performance springs and they're actually an inch shorter than the factory ones. Here's an old factory one that I have. And if you look, they actually look like they're the same size. This one's a little bit shorter. But when this thing rolled off the factory floor, it set an inch taller. These things just wear out over time. Your car is probably 20, 30 years old. They just start wearing down. So this, uh, this spring is going to give you a super ride, and it's going to be a real nice uh, difference when you put it on your car. A couple of tools that you're going to need for this installation. You're going to need a set of spring compressors. Now you don't need the ones that, uh, that you use on doing a front wheel drive car. Those spring compressors are great big and those springs on the front wheel drive cars, they hold a lot of energy. These don't. So you don't need anything super expensive or super high end. Plus, a, a real nice thing about these smaller ones is they fit in between uh, these springs. They're real tight. So. This particular set of uh, compressors I bought, um, I just went down and I picked them up at Harbor Freight. I think it was 10 bucks for the pair of them. So uh, just a, a cheap set, no big deal. I definitely wouldn't recommend doing using these spring compressors if you're going to be changing the struts on the, your front wheel drive car. But for this application, they're perfect. A couple other tools that we're going to need. Uh, you're going to need a, ply, a pry bar, flat bar. You're going to need a flathead screwdriver. You're going to need uh, some box end wrenches, 15 16 11 16 9 16 a couple of 7 16 uh, You're also going to need a set of sockets, uh, 11 16 7 16 and so forth. Uh, and that's about it. Now that we've got our tools laid out, we've got our parts ready to go, the only thing left for us to do is uh, put the car in gear, set the brake, chalk the back tires, jack it up, and pull that front tire off. The first thing that you want to do is take apart the linkage that holds the lower wishbone to the roll bar. And the roll bar is this bar right here, and of course your lower wishbone is the bottom of the suspension. Depending on what type of uh, setup you have, they're going to be a little bit different. Mine is, uh, is an aftermarket, so mine is bolted directly with a clamp system to the wishbone. But most of your cars are going to have something like this, this little linkage system where this is bolted into the lower wishbone and then you have a stud that goes right through here and goes right into the end of that anti-sway bar. Either one you have, you're going to want to disassemble it first. Okay, now that your linkage is removed, the next thing you want to do is take a 7 16 deep socket wrench and remove these three nuts that are sitting at the top of the suspension. Okay, <clears throat> now that we've got that out, the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take that bolt and nut that's holding the bottom of that shock into the wishbone. With that, we're going to use a couple of 11 16 inch socket wrenches. Now that the nut's off, you're going to want to lift this wishbone up and down a little bit and start working that bolt out of there. Okay, now that we got the bolt out, the next thing you're going to want to do is grab a flathead screwdriver and be real careful about what you're prying against. There's a, uh, a grease zerk down here. Of course, you got lots of brake lines. You don't want to pry against any of that and damage it. You want to put this down in between that wishbone and the bottom of that shock and start wiggling a little bit loose. Once you get it pushed that way a little bit, now grab your flat bar and pry against that wishbone and you start getting that shock out. See where that shock popped loose right here? Now we not need to push the whole assembly forward this way and the whole thing should drop out and then we can take it over to the bench and fix it.
Okay, my spring decided to be a little bit more stubborn, and so I had to put my spring compressor on there to get that spring to scrunch up a little bit so I could get it shifted up and swung forward. You might want to keep that in mind in case your spring starts giving you a little trouble too. Now that our assembly is off, the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to take our spring compressors, we're going to put one on each side, we're going to compress this spring just a little bit, just enough to get the tension off of this top mounting plate. Once we have the tension off of it, we're going to take our uh, two nuts off of the top, we're going to remove the top plate, and then we're going to take the tension back off of these springs. Now that we've got our spring compressors on, all secure, the next thing we're going to want to do is take our 15 16 wrench and start uh, tightening down on each side. I like to do about five turns on each side and that should be enough to get the tension off of this front plate. Now that we've got the tension off of our mounting plate, the next thing you're going to want to do, grab a couple of 9 16 box wrenches and start taking off of this, these two top bolts securing that plate. Now if the whole assembly starts to twist on you, kind of like this one is, what you're going to want to do is grab a, grab a crescent wrench and just squeeze it in and hold that top while you loosen this top bolt. There we go. Okay, once our top mounting plate is off, the next thing we're going to want to do is go back to our 15 16 and start loosening up this spring. Now once we're done with this, the only thing that we're going to need is really this top mounting plate for our new shocks. The rest of this assembly is done. We don't need any of it. Okay. Now that our uh, assembly is taken apart, our spring compressors are off, the next thing you want to do is grab your shock. First thing you're going to want to do is take this top bushing off and, and both the washers. Okay, now, my plate, yours may be a little bit different, my plate has those uh, those washers already permanently pressed in there so I don't need this bottom one here on the for the top bushing and I don't need this top one for the bottom bushing because mine are already pressed in the next thing you're going to want to do pull your shock apart like that slide your spring on there then take your top mounting plate Set it right down on there. Put on your bushing. Put on your flat washer. Put on your nut. And snug it down. The next thing you're going to want to do is take your coil spring compressors. Compress it again just a little bit. Snug this down nice and tight just like we did before. Again, you may have to use that crescent wrench to hold this all in place as you're snugging it down. And then once you get it down nice and tight, then you're going to want to take, uh, take your compressors off. And then we'll go over to the car and put it in. Okay, now that we've got our spring compressors off, let's take our new unit over to the car and put it in. Now, to put our new uh, assembly back in, you're going to want to take it from underneath, bring it through the top of the uh, upper wishbone, set it down in. Also, remember that your adjustment here 
is facing forward so you can you can get to it. Once you get it down in, get that first nut or first bolt right through the top, get a nut on it to hold it into place. Then hold it, uh, adjust this top so that those next bolts are going to come through. Get your washers on them and their nuts to hold it into place as well. Now that you have your nuts and washers on, just finger tight, here's a good little trick for you. Take and put your knee right on this top wishbone, put a lot of weight and pressure on it, and then you're going to be able to adjust and slide that uh, the bottom of that shock right up into the place in the lower wishbone. Once you have that down, the next thing you're going to want to do is take that flathead screwdriver, push it through so that you can get it lined up to receive that bolt. Okay, takes a little bit of wiggling, but you're finally going to get that screwdriver all the way through the bottom. And what you're going to do next is take your bolt and start working it from, from uh, this side and start working that screwdriver up and down so you can get that bolt slid into place. Now that you've got the bottom bolt in, go ahead and secure the nut and the bolt nice and snug and then we'll move to the top bolts. Once your top three nuts are secure, Go ahead and uh, put your anti-roll bar linkage back on nice and snug, and you're ready to do the other side. Well, that's it for our front end suspension upgrade. If you run into any snags while you're doing yours, go ahead and give us a call. We'll help you walk through it. Also, if there are any projects that you want us to put on film to show you how to do, drop us a line either on our website at howto at bpnorthwest.com or just give us a call at 503-864-2001. Thanks again for watching. Have a good ride. Mm -hmm.